Okay, so we are back here. Um, da, da, da. Okay, so the um, Gnomish Experimenter. Um, I think this card is terrible. <laughs> I think everyone does so far. Trump tried to argue for it, which I found funny. Um, I'm sorry, but even in spell-heavy decks, which is the one one thing you could say about this card, it's like, oh, well, we'll put it in spell-heavy decks and it won't matter. It will, because in spell-heavy decks, usually, things that are important are, the, like, the minions. So, for example, in Miracle Road, if you draw the Gadgets in, or you know, back in the day when it was the Leroy, with that, and it becomes a chicken, you lose. And that's not worth it, just to draw one card. Miracle Rogue can figure out ways to draw cards, they have plenty of them. Um, another example is Freeze Mage. You draw the Alex Traza, or the Archmage, if you're running it. You're just, you got no shot. It, it's just, it's not worth it. It's not worth the risk. Um, I don't think this card will ever see play. I really don't like it in Arena because it is just, I mean, it's a, Arena's a minion-based game, so just, there's no point. I mean, maybe if you have like 20 spells in the Arena deck, I don't like it at all. I think it's just a terrible card. So, I think it's the worst card we've seen so far. Uh, Goblin Sapper. So I talked about how spare parts might um, increase the chances of there being a hand mage. Um, so, um, or not hand mage, sorry, just a hand deck in general. So, you know, people load up their hand with spare parts and they can play Mountain Giants because they have more cards in their hand and all that stuff. And So they brought a couple cards, um, which I'll talk about both in a row here, actually, uh, to kind of to combat this and in general hand lock. Stuff like that. Goblin Sapper. Um, so Goblin Sapper has plus four attack while your opponent has six or more cards in the hand. So six is, I mean, even a lot of control decks, you usually have six or more cards in your hand. So this card can be fairly good against other control decks. Um, three mana for a, a six four. It's pretty damn awesome. The, I think Goblin Sapper has a place. I, I don't know. I think it's kind of like a, it's a meta call. That's really what it is. Or the other thing people are suggesting is maybe if you put this in a uh, mill deck. So you're trying to get your opponent to draw. You know, you have the Muklas and um, you have the Cold Light Oracles and you keep getting them to draw and then they overdraw their deck. And then you can use minions like this to kind of dominate the board while that's going on. And, I mean, we'll see. I was once beaten at a really high rank with a mill deck and it was very painful. Just... Uh, it was very painful. So, I mean, who knows? I, I like the design. I think it's interesting. Um, I think it's kind of a meta call. And I'm going to go down here to the clock Clockwork Giant. Um, again, kind of a meta call. Um, and again, for the mill deck. I don't think it will see much play, though, because unlike the Golden Sapper, the Golden Sapper stats on its own are fine. I mean, Clockwork Giant... Um, kind of tough to justify that big card if, you know, you're playing against aggro. Aggro, Goblin Sapper, at least, is it's got decent snat stats. It can actually, uh, you know, take out the 3-2s the, uh, the pretty well. So, I think it will see more play than the Clockwork Giant will. The Illuminator. Illuminator is a cool card. Illuminator... Sorry for that little... I can be yourself. The Illuminator is going to be... I'm not sure. The stats on its own, 2-3 three for 3 are solid. Um, or 2-4 for 3 are solid. I'm just trying to... Uh, see, the thing is, the, you'll automatically get 4 health on your hero, because you'll play this when you have a secret out. So, it's like a better Earth Ring Farseer. Um, except Earth Ring Farseer can heal anything, so that's the difference there. Anything on top of that is just great to this in a mage deck would be pretty good because you're going to have secrets that just stay there for a while, like Ice Block. Um, so if this can survive, then you keep peeling yourself up. It's kind of like um, 
Today is November 20th. Dreamhack Winter just finished. And Strife Row brought a deck, a mage deck that was basically meant to just sit there and mill. Um, to sit there and get your opponent to die of fatigue. And then it would survive. And this deck, or this card would go in that. Um, you kind of just slow burn your opponent out and you keep healing up and, you know, you kind of get rid of all their threats and then at the end you're left with more health than they are and they overdraw their deck and they die. Um, I see that card being in that deck. It might also go in other decks with secrets, I'm not sure. Wherever health is important, it'll be there if you have secrets. So we'll see. I also uh, want to say that uh, this card, the Sapper, uh, is you know fairly good in uh, Arena, and so is the Illuminator because they're just their base stats are fine. And if you get the bonus, you get the bonus. Um, Clock Giant is not usually Arena. There aren't that many cards in hand. Um, usually the cards are you don't really build up a big hand in Arena. So Clockwork Giant is fairly poor. It's probably the worst Giant. It's now worse than Mountain Giant, because Clock Giant depends on what your opponent does, where at least with Mountain Giant, you can kind of control your hand and how you're allocating your resources. Okay. Moving on down here. To Jeeves. Little Jeeves. I thought this was a really cool card design. And the reason why I like this card design so much is that um, this will allow aggro decks to exist for any class because the big issue is that you can't draw it's the reason why like the really like rush decks have been like um, zoo because you can just keep drawing and um, what's it called like cold like oracle is in backspace row for example um, because you need to draw and this can like replace that and then you don't give your control opponents at least cards and um, I think that that We'll see play. It's also a mech, which is gravy. Stats 1-4 aren't too good, but um, it is a body. And it does have a fair amount of health, so it might be able to survive um, for you to use it again. And then you just empty your hand again, and then you refill it. Um, kind of like uh, Divine Favor in a way, you know, you just kind of empty your hand. That's the way Divine Favor works, and then you play it. It's kind of like you empty your hand, and then you play Jeeves. Um, but instead of it just working for Paladin, because that's how Shotgun works, um, you can kind of use this with any class you want. So you can, this card would be in any class you want if you want to create like a really heavy, like like really low cost uh, rush deck. Um, so I think that's kind of cool. I, I like the design. Um, and um, if you're against another aggro deck, this won't be good because um, it'll refill their hand too, and they can kind of choose if they want to remove it or not. Uh, against control decks, though, they should probably, they probably will have three or more cards, so you should probably be alright. In arena, this isn't probably very good. Uh, set to set it up, um, and you know, unless you're making a rush deck, just on its own, vanilla in arena, this isn't very good. Lil Exorcist, Lil Apostrophe Exorcist. Um. This is a cool card. It is a cool anti-death rattle card for the meta. R really nice card, depending on how the meta shifts. Um, if You'll probably play it when there's at least one death rattle, and then you'll get a 3-4 three, three, with taunt, which um, is awesome. If you get more than that, that's incredible. And if you get less, it's not the end of the world. If you just have 2-3 um, two, for a 2-3 taunt, um, that's arguably better than Silverback Patriarch, which is just on its own a 1 4 taunt. So, um, it's definitely kind of a meta call. If there's just so many Death Rattle Hunters or so many Death Rattle decks around, this card will be really valuable. Um, in Arena, I mean, it should be alright too. Usually there's Death Rattle minions. On turn 3, that's where it's questionable. There aren't, and it's not so good because it's got the 2 attack. It can't trade with a lot of the 3 health. Three minions or three drop three health minions, so that's a little uh, annoying. But what can you do? Uh, I think it's a good card, though. Good design, solid all around. It'll see play depending on the meta. Um, when I mean meta call cards, they're kind of like Harrison Jones and Black Knight and stuff, and um, 
you know, BGH cards you put in depending on, you know, what's going on with uh, the what other decks people are playing. The Matter Bomber is for fun. The, ma the Matter Bomber is the... It's the Matter Bomber. It's the, the Matter Bomber on steroids. Instead of three, it doubles that to six random bombs flying all over the place. Um, it's really an arena card, I think. Uh, it can be pretty good in arena. Uh, you can kind of, you know, play it when you have an empty board and they have a few and see if you can hit them. Uh, get some damage in. Or maybe Warrior, maybe you can ping your own things, um, but probably not. It's probably an Arena card. Uh, the stats are less than favorable with the 4 health instead of the vanilla 5 for 5-5. Five, five. So, um, probably not a constructed card deck, but definitely a fun card. And there are a lot of fun cards in here, and a lot of really interesting ones, and so I'm just so excited for this to come out. Um, gonna say it is November 30th of 2014 so speculation on when this will come out is wild and I'm hoping for Tuesday <laughs> although a lot of people are saying it's gonna be three weeks or the end of a month or whatnot um, but the fact that they're doing their last reveal today is a good sign for me and Hans Omakano um, this card is crazy if you have a big board thing is that if you have a big board you're probably already winning and you probably don't need this card the stats for four mana are not great. Um, if you do give things Wind Fury or Divine Shield, Taunt really isn't that uh, important. But if you can get Wind Fury or Divine Shield, it can be really good. Um, it can be good in Zoo, maybe, because even if you do have a big board in Zoo, sometimes it just gets cleared. Um, so maybe Divine Shield can protect against that kind of thing, you know. Um, but I don't know if it's actually that good. It's like a win more card. It's like why I don't think KT is that good. Um, maybe I'm in the minority of that. I think KT is just a win more card. If you're winning, then you win more. And I think the best cards are if you're tied or if you're behind. It's like if you throw down Sylvanas on an empty board, like if you're already ahead, it's like, oh, well, it's not that great. But throwing Sylvanas down when they have a big board is fantastic. Um, it can absolutely flip a game around. And it's the reason why... It's one of the best cards because it's so good when you're behind. Um, so the opposite is true for Enhanced Mechano. It's really good when you're ahead, but does that really matter? Um, so we shall see. Again, these will all play out in time. Okay, we're hitting the the big boys here. Um, the Piloted Sky Golem. The Piloted Sky Golem is a cool, cool card. There are so many cool four-cost minions out there. Um, and, I mean, 6 mana for a 6-4, and then even just, let's go with the vanilla 4-4 four, four after that. But it's almost Cairn. Um, but it's almost Cairn Bloodhoof. The fact that it's random makes it obviously a little less valuable, because you could pop out a Jeeves, you know, or something like that. Um, and then that's not so great. But... I think the card is worthy of play. It's also a mech, so you get that bonus. I think it's a good card. I think in Arena it's really good. Um, and yeah, just a solid card. And the thing about these piloted cards is I'm so excited to watch um, professional tournaments uh, more. Because, I, I mean, I watched DreamHack yesterday and it was, it was good, but the meta's gotten stale. Everything's kind of been figured out. And these cards, I mean, everything is... Games are going to be so exciting with, a, like, a little bit of randomness. Um, and that's really exciting. The Recombobulator. Again, another exciting random card. Transform a friendly minion in, uh, with, into a random minion with the same cost. So, uh, people are like, well, what the hell's the point of that? The point of that is to heal. I, I think it's it's really just a heal mechanic. If you have a 4-1 Yeti out there that's taking some damage, you hit it. And then, let's just say you get the vanilla 4-4. Four, four. Um... You just heal three. And it's a two mana, three, two, heal three. That's pretty good in that case. Um, people are going to be innovative. They might figure out ways to use this thing constructed. I think it's a solid arena card. Um, its stats are good enough. Uh, two mana, three, two. I think it's a solid arena card. And we're going to see how people can use it and construct it and if they can. 
Um, in general, though, I, I like the card. Blinktron 3000. Blinktron is, again, a card that's going to make things really exciting, really fun. Uh, equip random weapon for each player. You get Nashbringer, and they get uh, Light Justice. Um, that is the best case scenario, probably. You can combo this with cards like Ooze. Um, but the fact is you are getting a random weapon, so sometimes you won't actually get something very good. Although most weapons are at least decent. I mean, if you get a Doomhammer, that's insane, but I mean... I'm trying to think of, like, the worst weapons in the game, and even the worst, even the Light's Justice, which is probably the worst weapon in the game. Oh, I guess the Wicked Knife, the rogue normal one. Um, yeah, that's not very good. But chances are you won't get that one. Um, the thing is, that does require two cards. Some people say this card's crap, some people say this card's good. I'm leaning towards it being not so good. The combo with Harrison is really interesting, though. It is a 10-mana combo, but it does allow you to draw. Um, it's worth noting there are going to be a lot of weapons, a lot more weapons. Weapons are going to be more popular. Harrison Jones is going to be really popular. Craft that thing now. Or, I guess, wait to see if it's popular, if you don't already have it. But it's a good card, and either way. Um, I'm really excited to see how this card works out, and, I mean... It can also be used to destroy uh, your opponent's weapon. So if they do have a Doomhammer or Jaraxxus' weapon, you can destroy it. And then get your own Jaraxxus' weapon. I think, in general, it's just going to be really fun. And that's why I'm so excited. The uh, game might be getting a little stale. So this is really going to spice things up. Dr. Boom. Um, summon to 1-1 one, one Boom Bots. Uh, warning, Boom Bots may, or bots may explode. Okay, so I'm going to show you the Boom Bots. Boom Bots, Death Rattle. Deal um, one to four damage to a random enemy min or random enemy, so it could be the character itself. It could be a minion on their side. Um, pass the vanilla test seven for seven seven, and the boom bots are cool. I don't think it's going to see play because they're just better legendaries out there. While the seven slot is a little rare, the eight slot and the six slot are sufficient enough. You don't really need a seven drop. Um, you can kind of find ways around that. So. I don't think this is going to be played, but I do think it's a cool card. Um, it'll be played on the. It won't be played in high level. How about I put it like that? It'll be played, but it won't be played in high level. That's what I'm saying when I mean it won't be played in constructed. It won't be in like those, what you would call right now like a standard warrior, you know, or a standard priest. Um, so yeah. Oh, also, arena. These two. I think this is bad in arena because the stats aren't good enough and let's just say that the um, let's just say the battle cry is null because you each get a weapon so on average you you know let's just say you get the same weapon so then it's a five mana for a three four in arena is assault dr room is a solid arena card it, it should be fairly good uh speaking of a great arena card faux reaper four thousand goodness <laughs> also damages um minions next to whoever he attacks I was talking earlier about how you want a card that's good when you're behind. Now this card's probably pretty good when you're behind, except that it's slow. So if your opponent can, if you hit, if it hits the board, your opponent can kill you maybe, um, or do a, like almost fatal damage to you while it's just sitting there because it doesn't have taunt or anything. So that's the problem with it. Um, this thing can absolutely wreck um, boards though. If it does get to attack, it can just tear apart. It's like a board clear. It is really powerful. Um, that being said, it's not going to be played constructed. I am saying that right now with full confidence because it's too slow. Uh, the 8 slot already, for example, it has Rag. And Rag hits the board and does something. I think this is a common thing with all the all of the legendaries that are used. They hit the board and they do something. Uh, all the 8s and above. I mean, Alkstraza does the 15. Your server is really slow, but at least you get a card. Uh, and a big body. So what they do is they hit the board, they do something, and then they bait out removal. Usually they get removed the first turn they're down, for the most part, actually. And if they don't, then you usually can go on to win the game. That's kind of the, um, the way that they work. These legendaries work. In this case, it hits the board, it doesn't do anything, and then it goes on to get removed. If it doesn't get removed, then yeah, you can go on to win the game, but most of the time they do get removed. So that's why it just it's just not fast enough. Even KT, who, which I think is just very slow. 
at least can do something when it hits the board, because then you can trade in a minion and then make it come back to life. This card just won't see play for that reason. The stats are nice, though. In Arena, it is going to be very beastly. Um, Mechjaneer Thermoplug. Whenever an enemy minion dies, summon a Leopard Nut. The fact that it's an enemy minion, too, is a little frustrating, because, I mean, what do you do with that, really? Um, like, you have to... If this is on the board, and this is on the board long enough to kill enemy minions, I mean, I guess you... Wait, I mean, it's 9 mana, so you can't really throw it down and then do a board clear or anything. I mean, maybe it's good if the board is full of things. It's full of things, so you throw it down and then you trade your things into their things and, you know, you get a bunch of leper gnomes on the board and then they do a lot of damage to the face. Again, this card is just really slow, though. And it costs 9, which is insane. It does have 9 attack, which is also insane. Very rare in this game, but... It's susceptible to big game hunter. I don't think it will see play. I just think it's way too slow and bulky. And the nine mana is a really is not nine mana is basically ten mana. It's tough to really do something with that one mana. Maybe spare parts will help out with that. But I mean, when you play Alexstrasza and you play Ysera, usually that's the only thing you're doing in that turn. Those are the two nine mana cards that are played right now. Um, this card doesn't do nearly it as much as they do. I just don't think it's going to see play. Murmuron's Head. Another legendary I don't think will see play. Um, it's crazy, but I don't think it'll see play. At the start of your turn, if you have at least three mechs, destroy all of them and form Voltron. So, or Vol... It's Voltron. That's what I'm going to call it. Uh, charge Mega Wind Fury. You can attack four times. It is insane. It is a better Thaddeus than Thaddeus is. Um... It has a much harder mechanic, because it's at the start of your turn, so... If this card's out, and you have two mechs on your side... Because it's a mech as well, so it counts as that. And your opponent can't clear enough of the mechs... So that you can summon Voltron, you probably already won. It's a win more card, because your board is already in a strong state. And if they can't... They know that this is coming. You know, because it's the start of your turn. You have to serve... Three mechs have to survive your opponent's turn. And if they can, you've probably already won. It's the reason why I don't think it's a very good card. Um, the 5 for a 4-5 is not great. And the mech... That gives it some value. Kind of like the mech Junior Thermal Club is. Maybe that's why the mech Junior Thermal Club might see play in a mech deck. Um, but... I don't think so. And with that being said... There is a much better mech, legendary, high end, um, which I will say for the end. I will skip it. Dashley. Uh, Dashley is a pretty cool card. Uh, battle cry and death rattle. A spare part card to your hand. So the first battle cry and death rattle in one card, which is cool. It allows you to fill up your hand. So it might be in those hand decks that I'm thinking might uh, appear with all these spare parts popping up. Um, also, the spare parts are spells. Maybe you put it in Miracle. Stats on its own, 5-7 for 6 is 1 less attack than both for Stoker, for example. But if you're thinking it's 6-6, six, 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 or 6 mana, 6-6, six, six, it passes the vanilla test. Um, and it gives you, like, let's just say, if you add up those two spare parts to a card, it's like, you kind of get, it's like 6 mana, 6-6 six, six, draw a card, but not quite. Um, but you do get two cards in your hand. I think it's a good card. I think it's a niche legendary that might actually see play depending on what happens with certain constructed decks. Um, it's really interesting though, and I think it's a cool design. Um, and I like I like that spare parts are going to come into hands and makes every game different, and um, people are going to have to figure out how to use them the mo in the most effective way possible. And I think it's going to make Hearthstone become less about the draws and more about the skill, even though it's already like a lot about the skill. But draws are still very important and. Um, Brand Mist is going to increase, like, it's going to actually increase skill, I think, this randomness. Uh, I think it might, because people have to kind of plan for scenarios and figure it out. That's what Ben Brode was saying, and I agree with him on that. In Arena, I think it's also a solid card. Uh, just a, a nice, solid, legendary, um, you know, you'll pick it a lot of the time, if, if it's there. But not all the time. Okay, the Big Daddy. 
My favorite card that I've seen so far. Maybe not my favorite card. Well, my favorite, probably the best card, though. Um, Sneed's Old Shredder, Death Rattle, Summon a Random Legendary Minion. Some people think this is awesome. Some people think it's just too unreliable to play and construct it. I think this card's going to be constructed. I was saying that things have to do something when they hit the board. The one exception to that is if they do something when they leave the board. Um, like Sylvanas uh, or Cairn. Um, even though those are six drops, so that's why they can kind of get away with that. But still, the fact that they can summon another grant, it just, the upside is so high. Um, and the downside, it, while low, isn't low enough that it's terrible. Um, I think this will be a more controlly control deck, so I don't have, for example, Control Warrior probably wouldn't pick this over Rag because Control Warrior likes to put the health down to 15 and then uh, you know, rag and hit to the face for eight, and then you can kind of swing from there. Um, but in Priest, for example, um, although there aren't a lot of slots in Priest right now, but who knows, this is certainly fun. It's got five health, it's not susceptible to Big Game Hunter, the stats are all right, five, seven. Um, it's a big minion. Seven health is a lot to deal with, um, and you can't just Big Game Hunter it. So, and then when it does die, it comes back as could be anything. You get a Draxus out there, you could get a Lower Walker Cho. First of all, when this sees play, and it will see play in tournaments, it is going to be so fun to watch. Um, I think that this card is going to be constructed, and I think it's also one of the best uh, arena picks. I think it's just a really good card. It's also a mech. <laughs> just tack on something else that's good about it. Um... So yeah, and not only that, this is the part that I really love about this card, that the, um, like a lot of legendary people are like, oh, well, they'll never see play, and we'll never get to see them. Like, look at a card like Gruul, for example. Um, you never see that in a tournament, and, or Nosdormu. These cards we will see played in professional games because they will pop out as Sneed's Old Shredder, and it'll make the game so exciting to watch, and I love that about this card. Um, you can see cards you just never see, and, you know, or it pops out a King Crush and you smack a right. It just, the possibilities are just so much, and anything can happen, and, I mean, it'll make for the craziest games, it'll make Hearthstone one of the best games to watch. Um, I already love watching it, but this, I'm just so excited to see this kind of stuff. Um, the craziness will ensue, Trollden is going to have a field day with this stuff. Um, so yeah, that is my review of the common cards that we have been shown so far. Um, and I'm going to do a separate video for each of the class cards um, coming up. So click on the next videos and um, thanks for watching.